Welcome, students. We're on our first lesson of the first module, Rigid Transformations, called Moving on the Plane. Sometimes you can't see yourself clearly until you see yourself through the eyes of others, as said by Ellen DeGeneres. And here's an event of interest for this week. Partially, I like this partially because um, I like to run and uh, my siblings are from South Korea. This is also from 2011, so y'all were alive and uh, um, hopefully this is relatable. <laughs> Here's your agenda to the left, so let's go ahead and get started. In the first quadrant of your math journal, I asked you to write down your daily learning targets, which can also be found in the handout of the overview that I uploaded to your uh, CTLS Learn platform. In quadrant two of your math journal, I asked you to write the problems, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. And when we discussed part one, we concluded that A uh, doesn't belong because it is a straight line or a straight angle, whereas B, C, and D uh, are uh, less than 180 degrees, uh, B looking to be a 90 degree angle, C being an acute angle, and D being an obtuse angle. This was able to help us with part two when we estimated the angle of rotation that maps the figure A onto B. We were able to find this by selecting their corresponding sides of each figure and noticing that it created an obtuse angle at 120 degrees. Take the time to explore these digital applets that represent three different dances. So I provided two examples right on the, the presentation here. Uh, the first step to the second step shows a uh, slide from left to right, which we now call a translate, using our academic vocabulary. Uh, step five to step six shows a rotation counterclockwise using our academic vocabulary. So again, you can click on these links and they will take you to the applets so that you can explore this on your own time. Let's start reading this article about uh, special effects using transformations that go into the movie such as Avengers The Endgame. On your own time, you can engage in the videos and other resources on the page to enrich this learning experience. Take the time to explore these digital applets that represent three different types of moves. Some guiding questions are we gave mathematical names to the three types of moves we have seen, and what are they called? They're actually provided here for you as a review. What do we mean by corresponding points, and what do we mean by a figure's image? So remember we said that corresponding points are the matching vertices from the pre-image to the image. And what do we mean by a figure's image that is the transformed figure after it has been moved from the pre-image based on whatever rigid transformation you've been given. Here are your formal notes covering the academic vocabulary on translations, rotations, and reflections. Please uh, do this in your math journal on the right side uh, across from your four quadrants. Uh, use colors and a straight edge and make this process meaningful for you. To review our understanding of the rigid transformations, uh, we watched a video from BrainPop, uh, and then uh, on your own time, you can quiz yourself asynchronously, uh, and then if you have any questions, meet with me during office hours if you're struggling to answer any of these questions correctly. In quadrant three of your math journal, Write the problem, show your thinking, and indicate your answer. We took a look at part one uh, and how the frames or the figures in each frame are uh, moving or transforming. Uh, frame one to frame two is a vertical slide or vertical translation down. Frame two to frame three is a rotation counterclockwise. And uh, frame three to uh, frame four is a vertical sh uh, shift or vertical translation up. Part two, what type of uh, move takes figure A to figure B and explain your reasoning? And while we at first thought this was a reflection, 
because we saw the line of reflection here, we realized that the vertex of uh, vertices of each figure did not mirror the same distance on the other side of the line of reflection. And so therefore we were able to discover that this is a point of rotation and in fact from A to B it rotated counterclockwise 180 degrees because it creates a straight line with our corresponding sides. In quadrant four of your math journal, reflect on your progress in mastering today's learning standards, rate your self-confidence, and explain why you gave yourself that score. And so again, reviewing those two learning targets, I can decide which type of transformations will work to move one figure to another. And 1.2, I can use the terms translation, rotation, and reflection to precisely describe transformations. So were you at level one, two, three, or four? Be reminded that you're going to extend this learning outside of the uh, live class time by doing practice, independent practice, with your palette of problems, which are on Khan Academy. Ten new activities have been assigned to you, each containing four to five problems. While I did not assign any of the videos or articles, take advantage of these resources to help you review and strengthen your conceptual understanding if you are struggling with the practice problems. Also, visit me during my office hours with specific problems you would like me to review with you. Again, the required activity is to complete your palette of problems on Khan Academy. Your recommended activities is to make sure that you've completed your four quadrants and notes uh, in your math journal during your asynchronous time and create those academic vocabulary cards so they can review the uh, key terms for this module. Be here, be ready, be respectful, and you will be great at Griffin. Be kind.